we're going to go over right now is fundamentally the coronary artery anatomy. So let me write this down so you kind of get an idea. Coronary artery anatomy. Okay. Now, that said, uh, what is the coronary arteries? The coronary arteries are the vessels that supply blood And where do they supply blood? They supply blood to the heart. And so that's what we're going to look at. Okay? So these are the vessels that supply blood to the heart. Uh, what makes them unique? The coronary arteries, they function uniquely in that the coronary arteries fill during diastole, and they don't fill during systole, which is unique because most arteries, most vessels, they have their fill during systole. However, the coronary arteries can't fill during systole because the heart is compressed. And when the heart compresses to push out all the blood to the rest of the body, the coronary arteries also compress because they overlie the pericardium of the heart. And so because of that, what we have is the coronary artery vessels cannot flow during systole, but the coronary blood flows in about what we like to call early diastole. But we just call it, you know, for simplicity, we'll call it diastole. And so what we're going to go over right now, and uh, I guess I'll get a better marker, is we can start drawing the heart in red, and then I will... And again, I... Unfortunately, doctors don't really make the greatest artists, except for maybe netters. And that's my, that's, that's my rendition of a heart. Uh, I hope nobody has the heart that I'm drawing, but this is as good as I can do. And this is an anterior view, okay? This is an anterior view of the heart. And we're going to label this in a little bit. But what I'm doing is I'm kind of giving the outline to how the vessels function. And as I'm drawing them, you can see how they kind of overlie the pericardium of the heart. Okay. And I'll definitely add some pictures. Maybe I'll find some uh, royalty-free pictures that I can share with you guys so you can kind of correlate between my drawing, which is not so great, and a real drawing, which hopefully looks a lot better. And what we can see here is primarily what we have is uh, you're looking at this anterior picture of the heart, and it might look a little confusing to you at first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basic vessels first and then maybe I'll draw them out in a systematic pattern in maybe kind of like a web diagram to kind of give you an idea of how everything goes. So this is the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery uh, supplies the SA and the AB nodes for heart conduction. The electro, uh, the, the electrical impulses that the heart carries uh, are through the SA and AV node, and the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. And so the RCA is what controls that. Okay, so we have the right coronary artery, okay, and what it does is it, it starts on the right side, obviously, and it goes down. And as it's going down, it has just a branch that kind of comes out but don't worry too much about it. And it has another branch that kind of comes out a little bit further, and I didn't draw it yet, but I'll draw it now. And this is the right acute marginal. Right acute marginal. Right acute marginal artery. Right acute marginal artery supplies the right ventricle. Make sense? Cool. 
right acute marginal artery okay pardon my handwriting but i i like to speak it and say it out loud a few times and so you kind of have an idea of what i'm saying and right acute marginal artery supplies the right ventricle perfect okay now what we're going to do is that's the right side that's the right anterior side there's there's definitely more that goes on but this is the right anterior side now what we're looking at is we're looking at the artery that comes off somewhat more on the left side okay and so this is the left coronary artery cool left coronary artery left coronary artery left coronary artery that is the left coronary artery a branch off of the left coronary artery is the left circumflex artery left circumflex artery the left circumflex artery supplies the left and a little bit of the posterior side of the walls of the left ventricle left circumflex coronary artery supplies the lateral and posterior walls of the left ventricle okay cool that's that's the fundamental of this and then another branch off of the left coronary artery and boom that is the lad is what we like to call it lad left anterior descending artery let me add artery cool left anterior descending artery and it supplies the anterior uh, approximately two-thirds of the uh of the septum of the interventricular septum and you can you can see that very clearly that if you were to look at the heart the septum would be somewhere along here somewhere essentially that would be where the septum would be and then this is the uh right then left ventricles and so forth and then the atriums are a little bit well this is the right atrium but then the left atrium is in the back and you can't see it but it's in the back and posterior to the left atrium would be the esophagus and uh, we'll definitely go over that in a little bit but that's you know that's basically uh the coronary artery of the heart anteriorly now what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase all of this hopefully draw a slightly better heart for the posterior. Okay, and that's a little bit of what the heart looks like. Now, we know that the right and the left, okay, so we'll create the left here. And this is how it kind of goes and becomes a circumflex. So this is the right coronary artery right here, obviously, as we went over earlier. And this is the left coronary artery that we went over earlier. Okay, cool. We're on the same page. All right. And then this turns back. And now we're talking about it on the posterior level. And it goes. Okay, so I'm going to make it dotted. And then the left coronary artery goes in the back too. Okay, so it's in the back. And it also goes in the back. All right. And it anastomosis. And anastomosis means it's, it, it's, it's joining. That's really what an anastomosis is. It's an area where two different arteries join uh, blood vessel supply and share supply together. So if I was supposed to cut this off here, if there was a clot here, you know, if I cut off here, anywhere here, blood can still go from this side and supply, even though there's a clot here, in theory. And so there's an anastomosis here. Now that said, this also goes down. And it follows its way up anteriorly 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 and boom there's another anastomosis and where did we see we saw that the LED comes off here anteriorly and what do we see here so this is called this 
This is called the PDA. Not public display of affection, but posterior, 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 descending, descending, intraventricular artery. That's what the PDA is. Okay? PDA, posterior descending intraventricular artery, PDA, okay? The A is the artery, but I just wanted to add artery there to make it a little bit clearer for you guys. And here you see the LAD, boom, LAD, left anterior descending artery. Left anterior descending artery, anastomosis with the PDA, posterior, posterior descending intraventricular artery which supplies the posterior one-third of the intraventricular septum. So two-thirds of the septum is here, one-third of the septum is here, and boom, we get three-thirds of the septum. That's how the septum of the heart is supplied. Is this important? Absolutely it's important, because what exists on the intraventricular septum are the, uh, essentially the papillary muscles are there, um, and the papillary muscles uh, control the valves for opening and closing and so any kind of infarction really that affects any of these can in turn affect valvular function valvular function can be affected uh, by any of these is that true yes now let's clear this up I spoke a little bit earlier and this is one of the principles of the anatomy of the heart is that the most posterior part of the heart is the left atrium. Left atrium is the most posterior part of the heart. Um, and if you have an enlargement of the uh, left atrium for any reason, this can cause something called dysphagia. 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 Let me spell it for you. D-Y-S-P-H-A-G-I-A. -A. Dys. Like, it cannot. Phasia. To eat. Cannot. Or difficulty. Okay, and so cannot eat or difficulty eating. And why would you get dysphagia or difficulty eating? And the reason you would get difficulty eating with left ventric, uh, left sorry, left atrial, left atrial enlargement is because directly posterior to the heart, or directly posterior to the left atrium, because the most posterior part of the heart is the left atrium. So directly posterior to the left atrium is the esophagus. Esophagus. E S O P H A G U S. Oh, look at that. Phagus. You know, phag to eat. Okay, so there you go. You can kind of put that together. Is that if you have dysphagia, you probably want to think of the esophagus because phag, 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 phagus, phagia. You know, it's talking about eating. And so the left atrium compresses the esophagus as the food bolus is going down the esophagus. And so if we're going to look, this is the esophagus, okay? And then it kind of becomes the stomach and so forth. And you can kind of see that the heart is somewhere there, okay? It's a horrible heart. I hope nobody has that heart. But let's say that the left atrium is here. If it's impinging, let's say it's pushing in, if there's a bolus of food that has to pass down here, it would get stuck, right? And so this is why... A patient might complain, it's difficult to swallow, doc. I can't eat that well. Dysphagia. This is how it comes. Okay. Another presentation that you would likely need to be aware of is a compression of the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. Left recurrent. What does recurrent mean? It comes back. So left recurrent laryngeal, laryngeal, laryngeal. Where is the laryngeal nerve? The laryngeal nerve would be somewhere in the larynx area. Larynx, loud larynx, vocal cords, cool. Food pharynx, food pharynx, loud larynx. This is how I remember it. I think this is how most people remember it, but if not, I, it helps me. Maybe it'll help you. Okay, so what else can we look at? The left recurrent laryngeal nerve, obviously on the left side, so always keep your left and your rights uh, cohesively understood. And you'll notice that I wrote left to what looks like the right side, but you have to look that the patient is looking at you, right? 
And so, no, this is not exactly how it works, but left is on the right side and right is on the left side if you're looking in an anatomical position and uh this is basic anatomy and this is how we always describe anatomy so we have the same foundation whenever we're describing anything between any two anatomists or any two doctors um so basically if you have an atrial enlargement there is the vagus nerve passing by on the left side and basically the vagus nerve becomes a left recurrent laryngeal nerve so let me let me just write nerve to clarify this and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve can be impinged or compressed and compression of the left recurrent laryngeal nerve causes hoarseness of the voice why would that make sense because larynx loud voice vocal cords if you compress the laryngeal nerve would there be something that affects the, the loudness of the voice or the voice in itself? Of course, it makes sense because the larynx is involved in the voice. And so uh, left atrial enlargement can cause two things, dysphagia or the hoarseness of the voice. All right, so let's clear this, move on to the next kind of topic, I guess. And, you know, that is the coronary artery anatomy. Uh, did I cover absolutely everything? No way did I cover absolutely everything. The heart consists of a lot. There's a lot going on. It doesn't take just a couple years to become a cardiothoracic surgeon. There's definitely a lot going on. But is this enough to practice uh, a lot of the general medicine and to pass the basic exams? I think so and my book thinks so. So um, fundamentally, what we're looking at right now is what did I go over? We went over the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery arises from the right side of the heart supplies the right ventricle. So let's do that. RCA supplies the right ventricle. Cool. All right. Now the RCA gives a branch to the right acute marginal artery, right acute marginal artery. Ah, bad handwriting. Right acute marginal artery. All right. Now, the right acute marginal artery, yeah, supplies the right ventricle, right? And the right coronary artery also, also gives rise to the PDA. Posterior descending intraventricular artery, posterior descending intraventricular artery. And it supplies the posterior one third of the intraventricular septum posterior one-third of the IV septum intraventricular septum IV septum posterior one-third of the IV septum cool now the left coronary artery the left coronary artery supplies the lateral and posterior walls of the left ventricle that makes sense so left ventricle and, okay and the LCA gives rise to the LAD, right? And the LAD supplies the anterior two-thirds of the IV septum. Is that right? Yes, it is. Now, the septum also constitutes, essentially, um, papillary muscles. Okay? So, keep in mind that Anything that affects either of these septal, uh, uh, anything that affects the uh, blood flow through the septum, anything that decreases the blood flow through the septum, rather, uh, will affect papillary function of these uh, papillary muscles. In return, you would have valvular dysfunction or something along those lines, uh, is what I'm assuming. And the left ventricle, left ventricle, right ventricle, we went over that, and we know that the LAD and the PDA, they anastomose together. What is an anastomosis? An anastomosis is the joining of two vessels for blood supply. That's 
the most fundamental, simplistic way that I can describe it. And realistically, this is what you need to know. Uh, so this is the coronary blood flow. This is how the coronary artery anatomy looks. This is, I've done it both ways. I've drawn it out in my shabby drawing and I've given you my own little map about it and I've talked about it. And uh, if you go over any of the books for any of the uh, coronary artery anatomy in let's say you pick up netters or you pick up first aid or you pick up Kaplan, it's all the same. You know, uh, a part of doing this tutorial, I thought about how material is all accumulated together in one place and then I thought, you know, do I have to give sources for this? And I thought, no, no matter what book you look at, no matter where you go, you will always read the same thing. Is that, you know, this anastomosis, this function, this layout is always there. Will you have different clinical scenarios that are maybe given to you? Possibly. It's definitely possible. But remember, left atrium, if it's enlarged, it causes dysphagia or it can cause hoarseness of voice. Can it cause both? Absolutely. Why not? It can definitely cause both. And so, you know, this is how we do what we did.